of watching future uh, Pacers. I think the the uh, summer league for the Pacers has been a relatively good uh, good information. Yeah, I mean the Pacers have had good summer leagues the past few years too, and and Steve Gansey is a coach, the Fort Wayne Mad Ants, who's coaching the summer league team, uh, is a guy I know pretty well. The problem with uh, the, the last couple of draft picks for the Pacers is nobody's really been able to seem to pan out. We've seen guys like Rakeem Christmas and TJ Leaf, and uh, you know those guys just just really not pan out uh, for the team. So. Uh, I'm hoping that this year the pick is a little different and then things pan out. You know, that's the one good thing uh, that Larry Bird was was exceptional at was picking quality players in those mid-teens picks. And, uh, you know, I think that's the one thing that the Pacers uh, do miss from Larry Bird. Maybe he wasn't the best as far as bringing free agents into this or that, but, uh, you know, scouting guys and picking guys uh, who maybe other teams overlooked in those mid-teens picks was something that Larry Bird was very good at. If you look back at guys like Danny Granger and Lance Stevenson and Paul George, and uh, you know, the Pacers seem to have whipped these last couple of years uh, as far as draft picks go. But uh, you know, we'll see. Miles Turner, obviously, they got correct too. And there was another guy, uh, you know, in, in the 12, 13, 14 range that uh, they did very well on. So. We'll see what happens, but, uh, you know, it'll be exciting. I think it'll be better for these guys once they get uh, playing with their teammates and, and, and they really it, – it, this is so different from experiencing gameplay like it is in the NBA. It's like playing ball, uh, you know, at your university in off time. So playing in the NBA is a lot different. When guys are throwing elbows and, and pushing you around, it, it's big boy basketball then. So we'll see how these guys fare then. Well, let's talk a little NFL, hear why we got you. Uh, certainly one of the big stories we talked about with Sean McCoy, but also – uh, Terrell Owens, uh, I, I really think that he needs to let it go. I think he – there's people who have worked their whole life to get in the Hall of Fame. The sagni, sagni the the ability to get into the Hall of Fame is no easy task. I think Terrell Owens, although I understand maybe he's trying to make a message, uh, they're just basically going on like he's not even there. They, they're not going to let him do a video conference, a video uh, feed. Uh, why doesn't he just show up to Canton, be honored, and go about his life? Well, I mean, you know, the NFL Hall of Fame is okay. You know, and you watch those first couple of features and stuff just drags on and drags on. By the end, who really cares? But I, I think where Terrell Owens is smart, and, you know, maybe he's a little hurt that it took this long to get in, but I think the smart thing is, what are you going to be watching? The speech he's given uh, from his location or the ones that just drain on by the NFL? I mean, if, if it's about T.O., and, and the guy's a, a, a great marketer when it comes to marketing T.O., I'm interested in it now. I mean, the Hall of Fame's great, and I understand the honor of year, but let's be honest, those speeches tend to drag and drag and drag when they thank everybody, uh, you know, and it's a super long ceremony. Is it, uh, is it suck for NFL fans that he's not going to be there? Maybe, but uh, as far as it goes, I'm, I'm interested in it now. He's, he's piqued my interest, and I'll definitely be tuning in to watch him give uh, his speech, whether he does it via YouTube or what he does. Uh, it's piqued by interest, if nothing else. Well, absolutely. Also, uh, in the last 24 hours, we learned that DeMarco Murray is going to be retiring. Uh, you would think, because we haven't seen him sign, that we just talked about this with Ed also, that Des Bryant could be in line to retire. There's, there's not been any announcement there. But I think uh, us fans here of the AFC South is okay with uh, the retiring of DeMarco Murray. But let, let's face it, he was a great player and certainly will be a Hall of Famer in the future. Uh, but thoughts on the retirement of DeMarco Murray? I think DeMarco Murray's retirement lasts till October, honestly. I think that he wasn't getting <laughs> the offers that – I, I, honestly, I, I don't think he was getting the offers that he wanted. And I think when you see uh, teams with their top back go down, I think then – the, uh, especially if it's a contending team, the serious offers to DeMarco Murray won't show up. And I honestly believe that, uh, you know, come October that uh, DeMarco Murray will be playing football again. You know, as these guys get older, and we saw a lot from, you know, we, the, I'm talking to guys like Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, and even, you know, we, uh, Tony Gonzalez will figure out ways to miss training camp. But as you get older, especially in, in a position like a running back, training camp just beats the hell out of you, you know. And if you're a guy who stays in top physical condition, uh, you know, guys try to figure out these veteran guys all the time how to get out of the training camp because it was just such a wear down on them and their bodies. Um, but I know I honestly believe I know there you know four or five teams were reported a week ago to be interested in him. And I just I, I don't think he felt he was getting what he was excuse me what he was worth. And so I really believe that the, you know if you see a top tier team that uh, that's struggling in the rushing game 
or that uh, has an injury, I really believe that the, the offer will be right there. DeMarco Murray will be back, uh, you know, in the NFL. If you see a, a, a team, uh, you know, if there's a – think of a guy like David Johnson went down last year, and if the, if the Cardinals were in contention, you think they're not calling a guy like that? Or, uh, you know, he, think of the fit he would be in New England if, uh, if one of their backs goes down. You know, it, it's, a, it's a scary proposition. And if the Colts, uh, you know, are better than we think, uh, you know, with the suspensions uh, going on in, in the running back position – uh, you know, I was really hoping that he would be a move that the Colts would look at because they haven't had a real power guy. Uh, and the fact that they beefed up their offensive line, I think DeMarco Murray could do some damage, especially playing eight games alone on turf at home. Uh, I think DeMarco Murray would be a guy they didn't have a Colts would definitely want to look at. Uh, so I think by, by, by October's latest, he's playing football. You know, great, great point there about the Indianapolis Colts. I think a lot of people would like to have him. Uh, on the Colts as opposed to on the Titans. And, yeah, he's, he's at the end of his career, but I think you're right. But, okay, so we talk about another great player, Des Bryant. Why has he not been able to get signed yet? Uh, well, I mean, we saw it over the last couple of years. Des Bryant's obviously lost a step. And, you know, that was Des's game was being able to get separation for that big play. I think where Des Bryant can still uh, be uh, used uh, tremendously it is a guy in a red zone situation. You know, he's a guy where your quarterback can throw the ball up and does Brian can go get it because of his size and his strength. And I think that, uh, you know, teams don't want to pay a uh, premium receiver price for a guy who's going to be a situational receiver. And let's be honest, over the last couple of years, that's what he's been. Then you add in the headaches and, and, uh, and the talking in the locker room, uh, I think that, uh, you know, teams uh, don't want to pay pr- uh, prime receiver prices. But, one thing I will give Des Bryant, uh, you know, especially I don't know if you've seen the uh, the Amazon series they did last year, the, the 365 with the uh, all, all access with the Cowboys. Des Bryant's a competitor, man. In practice, he's a competitor. Uh, in the locker room, he's a competitor. On the field, he's a competitor. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, for bringing him into a team with a young quarterback, probably not the best situation, but uh, a veteran guy. He's another guy that I think that uh, once the season gets going, he's a guy that uh, sadly – looks like he, he could fill that uh, Randy Moss role on the New England Patriots, and I wouldn't be shocked to see him in a Patriots uniform, you know, come uh, uh, September, October. It, it, as sad as it would be to see, he really feels like that guy that Bill Belichick likes that maybe is a problem child of, at the end of his career but can come out and, and give Tom Brady another weapon. And, uh, again, you know, those red zone situations, there's, there's a guy who can – catch the fate almost as good as anybody in the NFL he's so big and so strong. So I think Des Bryant plays football again. I think it's another thing where maybe his ego's a little hurt and, and the money's not there. So, uh, you know, I, I think um, he's another guy, uh, like his former teammate DeMarco Murray, who come September or October be playing football for a contending team. Well, absolutely. And, you know, he, here's the thing uh, about uh, DeMarco Murray and De- Des Bryant. I think they both have a great resume uh, where, where the problem is, where, where, who's gonna, who's gonna take, who's gonna be that t- the first team to say, okay, I'll take a chance, I'll take a looker, I'll take a flyer, I'll take a feel on it and and, and see how it goes. So we're just a few weeks away from camp opening up. Uh, obviously, in your neck of the woods, Chicago Bears is uh, pretty uh, prevalent, uh, if you will. Mitchell Trubisky uh, needs to uh, prove his worth this year. Is he gonna be able to do that? Well, you know, he's a guy too. I mean, we talked about Des Bryant. He's a guy. If you look at the Chicago Bears, they could desperately use. You know, they've been so thin wide receiver position for such a long time. But you want Des who demands the football, and, and I think you saw a lot, uh, you know, early on um, with Dak Prescott. That I think it put pressure on Dak to try to find him, and uh, and it's not good for a young quarterback at all. So I think uh, you know the Bears will take a step forward this year. They did very well in the draft. And, uh, you know, I think that at this point their team looking to move forward. I don't think they'll be a playoff bound team by any stretch, but I think they'll be, uh, they'll, you know, they'll be, have a decent season. They're a team that'll go, uh, you know, 6 and 10, 7 and 9. So, you know, we've been talking about LaShawn McCoy, and let's just kind of talk about on a, on a high level view of the NFL. Let me just kind of bring some things to light here. LaShawn McCoy, we know what happened there. Pac Man Jones gets in a fight. Uh, in uh, an Atlanta airport, uh, uh, Cleveland uh, Keelan Wilson uh, gets charged for rape of an unconscious 17-year-old. <clears throat> list after list after list after list with these NFL players doesn't look good for the NFL. There's always seems to be feels like we're always talking about drugs, abuse, rape. What is going on? 
Well, I think for a lot of it, and sometimes it's other sports in the NFL, but I think the NFL in particular, you look at guys who have been coddled their entire life. They've been the best player on their team, usually through high school, through college, and, you know, they come into the NFL. And a lot of times with some of these guys who come from the uh, questionable backgrounds, they have trouble separating uh, their life, and they get a lot of hangers on once they've signed those NFL contracts. I think that leads into it. And, and I think the fact that they've always been able to work themselves out of trouble, they, they've had coaches in college help them, uh, people in their local communities help them you know, get out of trouble. But I think, you know, they feel a, a sense of invincibility at some point. So I think if you put the combination in of, uh, of guys from the past hanging on or, or that sense of, hey, I've always been able to get out of it before, then you cut that at times, you know, with uh, some of the side effects from some of the uh, illegal drugs the guys take where it uh, gives you that hyper, uh, hyper sex drive or, or the, uh, you know, the, the actually uh, on ability to control, uh, you know, rage. And I think you, you, that's a, a, it's a terrible mix when it comes to uh, the way some of these guys act off the field. Like I said, I, I, mean, I think I talked just a year or two ago, uh, we, talked, we were talking about Michael Vick. If I was this guy coming into the NFL and I had any char- questionable character issues, the first thing I would do before I even hired an agent was I would hire Tony Dungy as like an image consultant, as a mentor, because mm-hmm. look what he did to rehab Michael Vick. I mean, we, everybody was up in arms when Vick came back and, and signed with the Eagles. But by the end of his career, people were, you know, saluting him and saying, hey, thank you for everything, Mike. Uh, the first thing I would do if I had any kind of questionable background, I would hire Tony Dungy immediately uh, to be my mentor and work me through these early days of the NFL. Absolutely. I've always thought not just the NFL, but the NBA, MLB. I, I think you see, you see less of the MLB. I wanted to get into MLB because we're in the all-star break, but we're kind of running out of time. But we don't see as much in the MLB as we do in the NBA and certainly the NFL. I've always been a big fan is like, hey, we're going to give you some guaranteed money. Now, before you get that guaranteed money, you've got to complete the, a year of mentorship program. It's, we're going to teach you how to manage your money. We're going to, we're going to teach you how to – uh, stay away from the wrong women, if you will. We're going to teach you some of the warning signs. We're going to teach you some some consequences. We're going to we're going to help you learn. Now you, you can still make those mistakes later on, but now once you complete that, we're going to give you your guaranteed money. But you don't get that guaranteed money until you complete that initial mentorship program. I don't know if that would work, but it's certainly a, a thought. But there again, it's not it's not just players as we, as we see with the with the errors of the Cardinals. And Steve Kern, now I know that they've said that he didn't, as they originally said, the police originally said he misidentified himself at the time of arrest. I guess that was not the case. Now, it, it, it's his first offense. He has taken ownership for it. But there again, we, we, we've seen, well, we've seen Tony La Russa uh, fall asleep at the wheel in, in Jupiter, Florida before. So it's not uncommon for uh, leadership uh, to have their struggles and their problems, as, as we've seen uh, as the Miami Dolphins coach doing uh, coke on, on so the leadership has got to do a little bit better as well I don't blame Steve Kern for getting a DUI I mean it, it happens to the best of us it's happened to me it's happened to a lot of people I know unfortunately it's just a part of life but I just think it draws to a bigger picture when you're in a place of leadership all eyes are on you they are but also I think we've got to take into effect when it comes to that too that we tend to judge those in the public eye more harshly because if it was just my boss at my, at my program director at the radio station who did it, yeah, we'd look at it and be like, hey, that sucks, bro, but he wouldn't get the attention that, that Steve Time got because he's a general manager of the Arizona Cardinals. So I think sometimes for the smaller things like that, we have to take it into perspective that he's just a dude who's a boss at, at, a, at a corporation. He's also a boss of the corporation for the Arizona Cardinals, so he should know better, but again, he's just a dude who's a, a boss there and you know, some of the other stuff, like the several Shady McCoy, inexcusable. But, you know, I think sometimes we judge guys like Steve Kine maybe a little more harsh because they're a, a public figure uh, who makes a lot of money. Well, certainly I hope that uh, we, we realize that there's a lot of good in the NFL, too, as well. well. We're about out of time here, but final thoughts here before we wrap it up and put a bow on it. Uh, MLB going into the All-Star, what are your thoughts uh, as we go off the All-Star League? Uh, certainly you look at the Cubs, you look at the – uh, Yankees, you look at the Nationals, uh, you look at the, the Phillies, um, and certainly uh, you look at San Francisco and the Dodgers. What are your thoughts? Well, I look uh, forward to a fun trade deadline and everybody trying to position themselves to uh, Manny Machado for a couple of months. 
Uh, I think that'll be fun. And, you know, I honestly for, am looking forward to uh, watching Tim Tebow play for the Mets. Uh, you know, granted, part of the call. 